Welcome to all. I am Dr. Sindhal Kumar Subramanian, Assistant Professor in the Department of Physiology, All India Institute of Medical Science, Mangalagiri. Today we will be discussing on the physiology of adrenal medulla. To begin with, the suprarenal glands or adrenal glands consist of two separate endocrine glands. The outer adrenal cortex which constitutes 80% of the adrenal mass followed by the inner adrenal medulla which constitute only 20% of the adrenal mass. These two glands are different both functionally and in embryological origin. Adrenal cortex originates from mesodermal tissue while adrenal medulla originates from neuroectodermal tissue. The neural crest cells which are the left out cells when neural tube forms migrates to adrenals to form chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla. Hence the origin of adrenal medulla is neuroectodermal. Unlike the adrenal cortical hormones, adrenal medullary hormones are not considered essential for life. However, they support the system or prepare the body for a fight or flight response as explained by Walter B. Cannon. They form the part of the sympathoadrenal system in responding to emergency situations. There are various conditions that can increase catecholamine secretion, namely excise, hypoglycemia, trauma, anger, anxiety, pain and cold, out of which hypoglycemia is a very potent stimulus for secretion of catecholamines from adrenal medulla. All these conditions can stimulate catecholamine secretion through sympathetic stimulation. The preganglion sympathetic neuron directly acts on adrenal medulla and the adrenal medulla cells, the chromaffin cells are considered as modified postganglionic sympathetic neurons. The normal postganglionic sympathetic neurons will secrete norepinephrine at the level of target organs. However, these modified sympathetic neurons secrete epinephrine directly into the circulation. This difference is mainly because of the presence of the enzyme phenylethanolamine N-methyltransferase which transfers the methyl group to norepinephrine to form epinephrine. Further, for this conversion, it requires the presence of high levels of cortisols that is achieved with a unique blood supply that is present in adrenal glands. The blood enters the adrenal cortex, traverses the adrenal cortex and then reaches adrenal medulla. Hence, the blood reaching the adrenal medulla is rich with secretions from adrenal cortex that is the cortisol. The presence of cortisol or glucocorticoids is considered essential for normal development and maintenance of medulla. Further, the chromaffin cells, which are considered modified neurons, lack the proper dendrites and the axons. This morphological change in chromaffins is brought about by the presence of glucocorticoids. Further, as we have told earlier, the presence of cortisol increases the action of the enzyme PNMMT, which converts norepinephrine to epinephrine. The importance of cortisol in the functions of medulla is understand when we discuss the case of 21 beta hydroxylase. This is an enzyme involved in synthesis of cortisol. In this condition, cortisol production is less. So it will lead to adrenal insufficiency. In such a case, adrenal medulla, which is considered a different organ, the functions or the secretions of adrenal medulla is also reduced. So even in the case of 21 beta hydroxylase, which is a primarily a defect in adrenal cortex, the adrenal medulla function is also decreases. Coming to the sympathetic stimulation, the preganglionic sympathetic neurons secrete acetylcholine at the level of medulla, which acts on the calcium channels present in the cell membrane of chromaffin cells. This increases the calcium levels inside the cytoplasm. The calcium then leads to exocytosis of secretory granules. This is the mechanism of secretion of catecholamines from chromaffin cells. 80 percentage of the chromaffin cells will secrete epinephrine while 20 percentage of the chromaffin cells secrete norepinephrine. The other secretions that are found in adrenal medulla are dopamine, ATP, chromogranin A, opiate peptides such as metencephalins and adrenomedullin. The amount of dopamine secreted from adrenal medulla is very less. Even in the secretion of norepinephrine and epinephrine, 
depending upon the type of stress the amount of secretion varies in case of known stress such as writing an exam the amount of norepinephrine secretion will increase in case of unknown stress such as an accident the amount of epinephrine may increase moving to the synthesis of catecholamines catecholamines are synthesized from a non essential amino acid tyrosine which can be um, got from either from the diet or from the conversion from phenylalanine tyrosine hydroxylase adds a hydroxyl group to tyrosine to form dopa dopa decarboxylase removes the carboxyl group from the side chain to form dopamine dopamine beta hydroxylase adds a hydroxyl group to the beta side chain to form norepinephrine phenylethanolamine in methyl transferase adds a methyl group to the side chain to form epinephrine in this flow the conversion of tyrosine to dopa by tyrosine hydroxylase step is considered as the rate limiting step sympathetic stimulation activates the synthesis of catecholamines by increasing the action of tyrosine hydroxylase and dopamine beta hydroxylase further as we have discussed earlier presence of cortisol increases the function of pnmt enzyme for the conversion of norepinephrine to epinephrine moving to the metabolism the normal plasma levels of norepinephrine is 300 picogram per ml and epinephrine is 30 picogram per ml when the subject is in supine position when they stand the levels increased by 50 to 100 percentage in the case of adrenectomy the adrenals are removed the epinephrine levels falls drastically however the amount of norepinephrine there is no change or very little change this is because only 30 percentage of epinephrine is from adrenal medulla but the rest is from diffusion from post ganglionic sympathetic neurons hence adrenal medulla is not only the sole source of catecholamines hence it is not considered essential for life further the catecholamines half life is very less it's only 1 to 3 minutes that is it around 2 minutes this is because it is immediately acted upon by the enzyme catechol o methyl transferase which methylates norepinephrine and epinephrine to form metanephrine and normetanephrine respectively they are further acted upon by monoamine oxidase to form vanillyl mandelic acid and 3 methoxy 4 hydroxy phenyl glycol because of the rapid action of these enzymes the norepinephrine and epinephrine are degraded fast hence the half life of these catecholamines is about 2 minutes the degraded catecholamines are secreted in the kidney the major form of catecholamine that is secreted in the urine is vanillyl mandelic acid and the free norepinephrine and epinephrine is very very less in the urine so if we measure measure vanillyl mandelic acid in the urine it reflects the sympathetic nervous system activity and not the adrenal medullary activity as we can see in this diagram the contribution of uh, norepinephrine to vanillyl mandelic acid is more than the contribution from epinephrine from adrenal medulla if we have to measure the secretion of adrenal medulla we have to directly measure the epinephrine levels in the plasma or we have to measure free urinary epinephrines moving on to the mechanism of action of catecholamines catecholamines act through adrenoreceptors there are two types alpha and beta they are further subdivided into alpha 1 and alpha 2 and beta is subdivided into beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 there are various subgroups too all these adrenoreceptors belong to metabotropic g protein coupled receptors these are in contrast to ionotropic receptors which are ion channels by themselves when a ligand bind it opens so these are ionotropic receptors the adrenoreceptors are metabotropic receptors they have a g protein attached to it on stimulation a g protein may activate a ion channel or it activates the second messengers to bring about the physiological actions of catecholamines hence all adrenoreceptors are metabotropic g protein coupled receptors let us take an example of alpha 1 it is in uh, works along with gq type of g protein 
which stimulates phospholipase C, which converts phosphatidyl inositol phosphate to inositol triphosphate and diacyl glycerol. This increases the calcium levels in the cytoplasm, which is essential for smooth muscle contraction in blood vessels. Similarly, various adrenoreceptors have specific G proteins and specific second messengers to bring about the various mechanisms or physiological actions of catecholamines. Now let us move to the physiological actions of catecholamines. The catecholamines secreted from adrenal medulla works hand in hand with the sympathetic nervous system and along with the cortisol secreted from adrenal cortex through hypothalamus pituitary axis. All these limbs work together and prepare the organisms or the humans for the fight or flight response. However, which limb is stimulated depends upon the type of stimulus. Let us take an example of hypoglycemia. In this, adrenal medulla is stimulated more than the adrenal cortex or the nervous system of the sympathetic. This is because the adrenaline or the epinephrine secreted from adrenal medulla is essential for the metabolic actions and to increase the blood plasma glucose levels. Hence, in case of hypoglycemia, adrenal medulla is stimulated more than the other limbs. Similarly, in exercise, it is an anticipated response. Here, even before the stimulus is given, the sympathetic adrenal system prepares the system for the exercise. Even in hypoglycemia, there is a hypoglycemia, which is the stimulus for uh, stimulating uh, medulla or the sympathetic adrenal system. But even before the exercise starts, let us take an example of a runner who is at the beginning point. Even before he starts to run, there is activation of this sympathetic adrenal response, which prepares him for running. Hence, the adrenal, sympathetic adrenal system can be anticipatory too. Both epinephrine and non-epinephrine can activate the brain and increase the alertness. But epinephrine can increase the anxiety in an individual. They can cause pupillary dilation. Dilation of the pupils helps in distant vision, which helps to see the surroundings very clear in case of an emergency situation. They re reduce the motility in GA tract and urinary system. These are unnecessary actions in the case of an emergency situation. They increase renin secretion from kidney, which increases aldosterone secretion, which increases sodium reabsorption and water reabsorption, which increases ECF volume. Catecholamines also increases ADH secretion, that is anti-diuretic hormone secretion. Both these mechanisms can increase the ECF volume and thereby maintain blood pressure in an emergency situation. The catecholamines can act on thyroid hormone and convert T4 to the active T3 form. They can maintain non-shivering and diet thermogenesis. All these mechanisms increases the basal metabolic rate in an individual. And the catecholamines are essential to bring about the response of an individual to cold. In these mechanisms, epinephrine plays an important role rather than norepinephrine. They also play a role in potassium metabolism. They push the potassium from plasma to inside the muscles. Hence, they prevent hyperkalemia due to any other reasons. Action on metabolism. Its action on metabolism is very, very essential in case of an emergency situation to divert the necessary nutrients for muscle which is acting and to the brain to think properly. So the action of catecholamines in metabolism is to increase the level of glucose, increase ketones and increase free fatty acids in the plasma. They act on the lungs to cause bronchodilation, which helps in oxygen uptake. They are direct action on the heart to increase the rate and force of contraction and thereby increase stroke volume and heart rate and thereby increase cardiac output and maintain the blood pressure. Its action on blood vessels can be both vasoconstriction or vasodilation. Let us look into this in detail. In an experimental scenario, the action of alpha receptors on a blood vessel is to cause vasoconstriction. The action of beta receptors 
will lead to vasodilatation both the catecholamines norepinephrine and epinephrine can act on any one of the receptors either alpha or beta but the affinity of norepinephrine to alpha is more than beta hence the net effect of norepinephrine is to vasoconstrict as opposed to epinephrine its affinity to beta is more than alpha hence in an experimental condition epinephrine can cause vasodilatation let us bring it into a uh, integrated cardiovascular response and see what will be the response of cardiovascular system if epinephrine or norepinephrine is infused into the cardiovascular system when epinephrine is infused as we have seen that it acts on beta receptor to cause vasodilatation when there is vasodilatation the total peripheral resistance as depicted in the purple color will go down as we have seen earlier the direct action of the catecholamines on the heart is to increase the rate and force of contraction the blue color is heart rate as you can see that heart rate increases since the cardiac outputs depends upon the stroke volume and heart rate since both are increased in epinephrine infusion there will be an increase in cardiac output the green color the arterial blood pressure the brown in color the first line is systolic blood pressure and the third line is diastolic blood pressure and the middle dotted line is mean blood pressure since the systolic blood pressure mainly depends upon the cardiac output which rises the systolic blood pressure also rises the diastolic blood pressure mainly depends upon the total peripheral resistance which falls in the case of epinephrine infusion hence there is a fall in diastolic blood pressure the net result of epinephrine infusion is increase in heart rate increase in systolic blood pressure a decrease in diastolic blood pressure with little or no change in mean blood pressure there is an increase in cardiac output coming to norepinephrine infusion we have seen that norepinephrine acts on alpha receptor to cause vasoconstriction this is reflected in terms of drastic increase in total peripheral resistance in this experimental scenario there since there is a total drastic increase in total peripheral resistance the diastolic blood pressure which depends upon the total peripheral resistance also increases since the direct effect of norepinephrine on the heart is to increase the force of contraction and the rate of contraction the systolic blood pressure will also rise this results in increase in mean blood pressure which is sensed by the baroreceptors which reflexly now decrease the heart rate hence in the case of norepinephrine infusion instead of an increase in heart rate we see a decrease in heart rate this decrease in heart rate response is because of the reflex mechanism through baroreceptors for the stimulus of high blood pressure the net effect of norepinephrine infusion is increase in systolic blood pressure increase in diastolic blood pressure increase in mean blood pressure and their reflex bradycardia catecholamines acts on various organs to understand how these various actions come together to bring about the desire change in the body let us take an example of exercise which is in stress what is the goal of body in exercise to increase the nutrient supply to the exercise muscle while at the same time maintain adequate oxygen and glucose supply to the brain let us look into this flow diagram one by one to understand this catecholamines can act on splanchnic arterioles through alpha receptors to cause vasoconstriction this redirects the blood flow from ga tract to the required skeletal muscle the catecholamines can also act on the skeletal muscle arterioles here the action is different now it acts on beta 2 receptors to cause vasodilation rather than vasoconstriction by these two mechanisms the blood flow to the skeletal muscle is increased the catecholamines will act on veins and lymphatics through alpha receptors to cause vasoconstriction this will increase the venous return which will in turn increase the cardiac output 
the direct action of the catecholamines on the heart is to increase the rate and force of contraction and thereby it increases cardiac output by the action of catecholamines on the blood vessels and the heart it will increase the blood flow to the skeletal muscle through its action on the lungs it causes bronchodilatation through beta 2 receptors this helps in increased exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide oxygen uptake is increased while the carbon dioxide produced during the exercise is given out this helps in moving the oxygen to the muscles at the same time maintaining adequate oxygen supply to the brain also then the another important mechanism that is required during an exercise is to maintain proper nutrient supply for both exercising muscles and to the brain this is brought about by the action of catecholamines on three systems the adipose liver and the skeletal muscle in adipose through its receptors beta 2 and beta 3 it increases lipolysis and decreases glucose uptake its action on liver through beta 2 it increases glucogenolysis the breakdown of glycogen to form glucose it increases gluconeogenesis the formation of new glucose utilizing proteins and fatty acids it increases ketogenesis in skeletal muscles it increases glucogenolysis and decreases the glucose uptake but all these mechanisms the plasma level of glucose increases drastically it also increases blood ketones blood free fatty acids blood lactate and glycerol the increase in this nutrients is essential for the muscle and the brain to perform correctly further catecholamine acts on the beta cells in the pancreas through alpha receptor to decrease insulin secretion and it acts on alpha cells through beta 2 receptors to increase glucagon secretion hence the blood glucagon to insulin ratio increases this hormone further supports the metabolic actions of catecholamines then catecholamines through its beta 2 receptors decreases the motility of ga and urinary tract this helps in preserving the energy which is essential for muscles and brain hence we can see that catecholamine acts on various organs and tissues and how it comes together to bring about a desired change during an exercise that is to increase the nutrient supply to the muscle and maintain adequate oxygen nutrient supply to the brain also the actions of this catecholamines requires particular threshold levels for tachycardia epinephrine levels should be 50 picogram per ml to increase systolic blood pressure and lipolysis the level should be 75 picogram to cause hyperglycemia or increase lactate or increase diastolic blood pressure the level should be 150 picogram per ml to decrease the diastolic blood pressure to increase insulin secretion it level should be 400 picogram per ml norepinephrine rarely reaches its threshold value of 1500 picogram per ml to produce its cardiovascular and metabolic effects hence the physiological actions of norepinephrine is mainly through the local release that is as a neurotransmitter released from postganglionic sympathetic neuron moving to the dopamine the amount of dopamine secreted from adrenal medulla is very less further the physiological function of dopamine is unknown pharmacologically it has been found that dopamine infusion can increase vasodilatation in renal and mesentery through its dopaminergic receptor and vasoconstriction elsewhere it increases the force of contraction in the heart by acting on beta 1 receptor the net effect is it increases systolic blood pressure and there is no change in diastolic blood pressure these properties of dopamine is <coughs> used in case of traumatic and cardiogenic shock in this condition it not only maintains the blood pressure but also maintains the blood supply to kidney and mesentery adrenal medulla and is one of the hormones secreted from adrenal medulla it this decreases blood pressure by vasodilation it inhibits aldosterone secretion and decreases ecf volume thereby adrenal medulla is also found in 
brain and kidney the chromogranin which is secreted along with the catecholamines measuring this values will give an indirect uh, way to see the rate of catecholamine synthesis coming to applied physiology pheochromocytoma it is a catecholamine producing tumors of chromaffin cells in adrenal medulla the clinical features will be similar to that of sympathetic nervous system hyperactivity the three classical signs are excessive sweating headaches and tachycardia because of excessive catecholamines the blood pressure levels rise so much and this can cause headache it's increase in bmr the entire temperature increases and the body reacts by sweating a direct action on the heart is to increase the rate and force of contraction hence it results in tachycardia there will be sustained elevated blood pressure in the case of pheochromocytoma but in few there is possibility of paroxysmal high blood pressure in such a scenario the diagnosis of pheochromocytoma will be difficult in this patients they have also found orthostatic hypotension that is when a person is trying to stand from supine position they will have a drastic fall in systolic and diastolic blood pressure called orthostatic hypotension there will be anxiety often resembling a panic attack as you have seen that both the catecholamines can increase the brain activity however the anxiety will be caused by the epinephrine secreted from adrenal medulla there will be elevated blood glucose levels as you have seen the earlier what are the metabolic actions of catecholamines it acts mainly on adipose tissue liver and skeletal muscles to increase the plasma glucose levels plasma free fatty acids and plasma ketones it also causes a resistant type of arterial hypertension that is it is resistant to various pharmacological treatments also thus pheochromocytoma is a catecholamine producing tumor from adrenal medulla to summarize catecholamine secreted from adrenal medulla prepares the body for a fight or flight response in an emergency situation as explained by walter b kenan their embryological origin is from neuroectodermal tissues chromaffin cells in the medulla are a type of modified post ganglionic sympathetic neurons that secrete epinephrine the presence of cortisol is essential for normal functioning and secretion of medulla catecholamines are synthesized from the amino acid tyrosine they are rapidly metabolized to form metanephrine and norepinephrine and further it acted upon by meo to form vanillin mandelic acid the half life of catecholamines is 1 to 2 minutes and the metabolites are excreted in urine the catecholamines acts through adrenal receptors adrenal receptors type alpha and beta which have various subtypes also the adrenal receptors belong to metabotropic g protein coupled receptors which acts through various second messengers to bring about the physiological actions of catecholamines catecholamines work hand in hand with the sympathetic nervous system and the cortisol secreted from adrenal cortex as a sympatho adrenal system response to prepare the body for a fight or flight response and which limb is activated depends upon the type of stimulus the catecholamines act on various systems to bring about the desired change as you have seen in the example of exercise though catecholamine acts on various organs all these responses come together to bring about a desired change as in the case of exercise to increase the nutrient supply to the muscle at the same time maintaining the adequate oxygen and glucose to brain thank you